Let's get started. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are going to begin with the daily energy routine. My fave, my fave. Some people ask questions about shoes and bare feet in yoga class. And here is my answer. If you've ever wondered about whether or not to wear shoes or socks or come to your yoga mat with bare feet. Bare feet is always better because we have our nerve endings are more likely to feel what's under them. And excuse it improves. Me. Excuse yes. Me. Is this the big and loud class? Is it what class? Big and loud? No. No. Big. This is the yoga class. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have, however, if you're uncomfortable with bare feet, put on thinner socks. And if you feel more stable in shoes, wear your shoes. You can always feel and play with pressure on your feet inside your shoes. So that's my answer. Barefoot's best, then thin socks, shoes for sure if you feel more stable and safe. Um, there's no, no wrong way. Make it your personal practice. All right, let's sit on our chair, clear the flesh off our sitting bones. Finding a tall, erect posture, toned belly, lifting up through crown of head. Take a deep breath in, sigh out the mouth. Twice more, inhale and then a sigh. Hand on the heart, hand on belly, feeling the connection of our chest to our belly, our creative center. Set an intention for this next hour. Just for you, something sweet, something simple. Now feel the breath beneath the hands. Feel the expansion on inhale. We want the torso to grow on inhale. So if that feels backwards to you, that's your homework assignment to practice breathing in and expanding at the same time. On the exhale, we shrink. The chest falls and the belly draws back. It may feel natural for you to breathe that way. It may not. But eventually, it should feel natural to breathe that way. It's how we were born breathing. Expanding on inhale and deflating the torso on exhale. Let's feel and breathe about a handful more. Lengthening it out if there's room to lengthen. Mm, very nice. Let's practice three double inhales and a sighing exhale. So inhale twice, sigh out the mouth nice and slow. <sighs> when you're ready, inhale twice. And when you're ready, sigh out slowly. <sighs> One more this way. If your hands aren't already on the lap, have them float to the lap, feel your tall posture, roll your shoulders back and allow them to relax downward in that back position. Let's massage the side of the neck 
and the shoulders. We're entering into the daily energy routine, massaging the neck and shoulder, crossing that arm over. Dig in as hard as it feels good. <clears throat> and then swipe to opposite hip. I'm going to change my screen so I can see more of you. Swiping to opposite hip for the daily energy routine, breathing in the nose and out the mouth. Other side, massaging in. I'm a big proponent of self-massage. We have so many acupressure points in our body and generally the sore spot, the tender spots are good places to start with acupressure. Swipe to the opposite hip. Now completing the X, breathe in the nose, out the mouth. This is called the crossover shoulder pull. Notice where the intersection of the cross is, right at our sternum. Okay, fourth thumps with your finger pad, thump on the cheekbones. Please stay on the bony parts of the face, not the soft parts. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. And now the collarbones. We're using all four fingers. Technically, this acupressure point is right beneath the bony part of the inner notch of the collarbone. If you're using four fingers on each hand, you're getting the spots, the K27. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. For those, this is like a major intersection of our energy pathways. It's like, for those of you in Detroit, it's like 696 and I-75. <laughs> we want to keep that traffic flowing here. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. And then the breastbone. So right in the center, that hard breastplate. This can be thumped fairly firmly. <clears throat> this helps with our immune system. This increases our immunity. And we all can use more of that for sure. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. The final and fourth thump is the low ribs, right below the nipple line, and then off to the sides. So I just tap all the parts of the low ribs I can reach. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. This is spleen meridian, governs metabolism. Not just our food, which is great. We want to get maximum nutrients out of our food, but medication and, and ideas. So this helps us with thought thinking, processing, and food, vitamin, medication processing. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. Awesome. Pause with your palms up and notice if you feel any chi, any life force energy. We've activated a lot. You may or may not feel it. Pinch the first finger and thumb together. Gyan Mudra, it looks like the okay symbol. Pretend you're holding a magic wand and tap it to the opposite corners. The option is to tap the outer leg, the opposite outer leg. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. Another option and it doesn't matter how fast you go here, any speed. The other option is tap that magic wand on the opposite baby toe. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. All that really matters here is that you're reaching your arms out on a diagonal. This is called the cross crawl. Pause. We're... Now entering the homolateral crawl. So we pretend we are marionette, that there's a string attached from our wrist to our knees. When we lift one arm, that same leg lifts up. You can come up onto your toes, lift the whole leg, whatever is working for you today. 
Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. This is weird, I know, but it's super effective to organizing our energy. If our energies are discombobulated, it throws off a lot of things. Pause and let's tap the opposite leg. Back to cross crawl. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. These techniques were developed by a woman named Donna Eden, a man named Michael Gock, and another man named Wayne Cook, who um, were ex, are ex, two of them are still living. They're experts in uh, energy fields, bio, bio energetics. Okay, Wayne Cook. So Wayne Cook, we cross the ankles or cross ankle over knee. Whatever works for you. And then we give ourselves a hug. If your ankle's up high and you can reach it, hold the ankle with the hand and cross your wrists. So the options are up high cross, holding the ankle, crossing at the wrist, or crossing down low with the ankles and giving yourself a hug. Breathe in the nose and out the mouth. Two more breaths. This posture is actually named after Wayne Cook, the father of bioenergetics. Okay, let's switch. Switch the cross of the ankles, switch the cross of the hug. And if you're crossing at the knee, cross over the other leg. Please make sure that you're not having pain in the knee and hip if your foot is up high. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. Okay, uncross everything, return to your seated mountain. Let's press the thumb and the fingertips together like you're holding an invisible pumpkin and push the thumbs into the, um, between your eyebrows, the center low part of the forehead. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. Connecting the midline with left and right side. Moving right in, into the crown pole, curl your fingertips in and smooth the forehead from the middle outward towards the temples, smoothing the forehead. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. And then your fingers go into the hairline and we pull as if we had a middle hair part, we're pulling that middle hair part apart an inch or two or even farther whatever feels good. You don't have to be messing up your hair. You can do this as if you're like touching a hat. You can stay away from your hair or you can press down into the scalp. I like to press into my scalp pretty hard. This feels good, especially this time of year when my allergies are um, a little worse. Keep traveling back. It's like our head is an egg and we're splitting the egg open. Keep traveling back all down the middle line to the back of the head and the neck. And then when you get to the neck, there's no rush. Just let your hands hang off the neck, hang off the neck. Crown pull helps us with excessive thinking. Anxiety is excessive thinking. Worry, regret, flick all that excessive Thinking energy away, flick it away. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. Triple warmer smoothie. Okay, pay attention folks. There's gonna be a quiz on this at the end of class. Um, triple warmer smoothie is good for all of us with a chronic disease. It um, cools off the inflammation. All of this does, but this one does really well. So how do we start? We start by tracing around our ears, like that big question mark, up and around behind our ears and down our neck. I'm pushing into my skull. You don't have to. You don't even have to touch yourself. Just go close. 
I like to push in. It just feels good for me. You do you. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth. So we're tracing these question marks around, up and around our ear and down our neck. And then we brush off our shoulders, like we're brushing off dandruff. And then one, we can only do one at a time here. We brush off our shoulder, go down our arm on the darker side of our arm, where we have the, the darker skin, the most freckles, to the ring finger. It's like we're tracing from the top of the shoulder right down the arm to the ring finger and then tugging on our ring finger. Do that two or three times. This is called triple warmer smoothie. The tri triple warmer meridian, which is one of our energy fields, do the other side. Trace the shoulder down the darker part of the arm to the ring finger, tug it on. The triple warmer is <clears throat> overactive, especially nowadays with our cell phones ringing, buzzing, you know, the terrible news, the, just all the stuff going on. Our, the triple warmer is on high alert. So we're tracing it backwards, calming it down. That's why we call it a smoothie. Flick that away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sit and feel what's going on. There's two more. The next one is called zip up. We have a giant invisible zipper in the front of our body. It goes from the pubic bone to the chin. We use both hands. We press our low belly pointing to the pubic bone and we zip up this giant zipper to our chin. Zip it up. And while we're zipping up, this is a great time to seal in a positive affirmation. I am safe. I am healing. I am grateful. Anything you want to say, if it's positive and in present tense, zip that in. And lastly, the hookup. Take your middle fingers and press one into the belly button and press the other one in the forehead. Press in and up. Our middle fingers are acting like hooks. We're hanging on the hooks. And all we need to do after this is breathe in the nose and out the mouth. Our arms are acting like jumper cables. We're recharging our battery. There's a lot of energy that runs through our arms into our fingertips. We know this. There's a lot of nerve endings, especially our middle fingers. Breathe in the nose, out the mouth one more time. Oh my gosh, hands to lap, seated mountain. Let's get moving our spine, rolling the spine forward, arching, and then pulling the belly back, rounding. Thank you so much for participating in the daily energy routine with me today. We are all synced up. So good. And now we are taking care of our spinal cord, our vertebrae, pausing in seated mountain, hands on the waist. Let's tilt the teapot, pour the teapot out and come back to the other side. Make a little spout, tip the teapot over and come back to the other side. Let's do two more times each side, make your spout, Pour it out. Keep your spout and your teapot lifted and tall so we're not slumping to the side. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. We yogis need to change that. We're not short and stout, we're tall and proud. All right, back to Gyan Mudra, the okay symbol. Reach one forward and one elbow back and change sides. We're twisting at the waist and our waist is nice and long because we're sitting nice and tall, feeling good. We're jogging around the block. 
in our favorite jogging outfit. Breathe, make sure you're breathing. All right, let's twist a little deeper. When the left arm's reaching out, cross it over to the right leg. Hold the chair seat with the right hand somewhere down low. Breathe, sit tall, lengthen, and allow the torso to twist to the right. Breathe some more. I'm so happy you all logged in today. It's a good day to do yoga. T-G-I-F. One more breath. Come on back forward. <clears throat> Sit nice and tall. And let's go to the other side. Right hand to left leg. Left hand holds the chair seat. Sit tall. Belly to the left. Ribs left. Shoulders left. And we're gazing left. We're breathing in length, we're breathing out strength, keeping our posture long and strong. Let go of the hands, allow the body to unwind. Yeah, and let's hula hoop, hula hoop. Stir the pot with the rib cage. Big, small, anywhere in between, or change the sizes of your circling. Feel something different. Sometimes it's nice to do it a different way. Change directions. I got up my notes flipped close. I got to open up the page. Good. All right. Let's do some sun salutations and get our legs involved. Sun salutes, get the circulation pumping, the lymphatic flow pumping. Feel the feet, we're rooting down, sitting up tall. The inhale reaches our arms up. The exhale, we hinge forward without rounding the back. As soon as we feel the back starting to round, we stop right before that. Hands to the lap to support the tall back. Breathe in, lengthen, and now we hinge more. And it's okay for the back to round here. And it's okay for the head to drop as long as you don't have glaucoma. And if you have high blood pressure and do not take medication for that, I would not drop your head either. You'll get too dizzy when you sit up. Breathe. Good. Let's place the hands on the right leg, hold the right leg and lift the heel and then set it back down. Place the hands on the left leg, lift the left heel, set it down. Hands to the lap, push yourself up slowly, slowly, slowly. Head comes last. Halfway, we're leaning forward, peeking over the edge. Maybe there's a pot of gold over that cliff way down there. Hands up, cobra, squeeze the elbows back, tone the belly, zip up that pit of the belly, breathe, cobra. Good, straighten the arms behind you and then re-bend the elbows. Straighten, squeeze, and then re-bend. One more time, straighten, squeeze those upper arms and then bend. Breathe in and the exhale, push yourself upright. Hands to lap, take a moment, let it all recalibrate. <clears throat> Adding a side bend to round two. Inhale to reach up, exhale to reach over. You can separate the hands or keep both arms up. Inhale, reach up, exhale, other side. Now back to middle, exhale, hinge, flat back, straight spine, hands to the lap to support it, and then hinge more. Forward fold, Uttanasana.
Shake your head gently, yes. Shake your head gently, no. Hold on to somewhere on your legs. Some people like to wrap their legs under their thighs and hold the hands together. That's fine. Some people like to hold their calves. Some people like to hold their toes, like hook their fingers under their toes. Hold on to something. Gently pull, very gently, very gently. Just making this forward fold a little deeper. Gently, gently, gently. Let go whatever you're holding. Put the hands onto the lap and push yourself up, pausing halfway to re-lengthen the spine. Squeeze the shoulders back and allow them to settle towards the waist. Hands float up, returning to smiling cobra. Breathe. Push the feet down, squeeze the thighs towards one another. Like you're trying to hold a ball between the legs. You don't want it to drop. Breathe, breathe. Lift the pit of the belly, lift the chest, breathe. Good. Next time you exhale, push yourself upright. Hands to the lap. Good stuff. Let's straighten the right leg and point the toes up to the ceiling. And then point the toes towards the floor. Keep going, nice and slow. So we're pausing at the extremes, the extreme flexion and the extreme pointing. With the toes up, let's, from the hip, Windshield wiper the leg is coming from the hip, not the knee or the ankle. The whole leg is moving as one, coming from the hip. We're pointing the toes left and right, left and right. Good, good. Now, hang on to the sides of your chair or the waist, lift the leg a little or a lot, it doesn't matter, take little pumps, bend the knee, press out to the heel, keep the belly toned, the torso lifted, reaching up through crown, little baby pumps, do your best, you do you, set that foot back down to seated mountain position, and notice what you feel like. Okay, straighten the left leg. Toes are up. And then we point the foot. Toes are up. And we point the foot. One side may be very different from the other. We're doing one side at a time, so we're not favoring, the stronger, more coordinated side is not taking over, gives us opportunity to visualize, sense. Visualization is more than just seeing the movement in our head if it's not actually happening in our body. It's feeling it in our imagination using as many senses as possible in our imagination. Okay, when the toes are up, we go to the windshield wiper from the hip joint. You can put your fingers right in that hip crease and feel, feel the mechanisms making this movement happen. All right. When the toes are pointing straight up, lift the leg a little, a lot, and pump it out. Belly is toned, posture's tall. We're pressing on the brakes and then releasing them. Press on the brakes. We're driving like my godfather, down 94. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Getting a little car sick in the back of the station wagon. 
<laughs> you know, we all had a driver like that in our family, didn't we? Okay, put that foot back, shake it out. Shake it out. Flap those knees in and out. Rub the thighs briskly. Let's do some warrior poses on the chair. Okay. Um, first, we'll do right side. So pick up the right leg and set it off to the right. So the left leg is still facing the front of the chair. Let me move some of my props because they're in the way. The right leg can be super duper wide or not super duper wide. You do you. I like to sit off the corner of my chair and closer to the edges. My sitting bones are still on the chair for safety and I clear the flesh off because the more the sitting bones are exposed, the healthier position our pelvis is in, which means healthier back alignment. And, um, but feel safe. If you have arms on your chair, then obviously there'll be an arm in the way for the right leg. So just stay facing forward completely and separate your legs into V shape. Perfectly fine. Wherever we are, we're, our legs are in a V shape. Sit up nice and tall. So our torso is right in center of the legs. We're not twisting the torso to the left or the right just yet. Sit up nice and tall. Okay, symbol. Press the thumb and first finger together. Engage the belly. Lift the heels. Press the elbows back. Engage the belly. Corset the ribs. We don't want the ribs to fly open. Breathe. This is goddess posture. Good. So even if you're a dude, goddess posture is good for you. It's nice for balance and strength. All right, lower the heels, lower the hands. Sit up nice and tall, engage the belly, corset the ribs, hinge forward. Hinge forward. Place your elbows on your thighs. If they can reach, if they can't reach, keep your hands on your thighs, no problem. Lengthen the torso here and engage the belly here. Breathe. This is wide-legged forward fold. At any time you wish to go deeper, hinge more forward or lower. Maybe the hands can slide down the legs. If you have blocks, blocks are nice between the feet. You could set your hands on the blocks. All right, one hand to the thigh, other hand to the thigh. Push yourself up slowly. <clears throat> Arms out to goal post. Sit up nice and tall. Turn the torso to the left. So it's looking more to the left leg. Breathe, good. Now we're going to shift the ribs to the right. Upper body shifting to the right. Place the right elbow on the right thigh. Maybe straighten the left arm. Only if that doesn't hurt the shoulder. Breathe, tone the belly. Right now our right arm is holding us up. Let's ask our belly to hold us up. Really tone it, zip it in, and then straighten the right arm inside the leg. Breathe, reach up. Even if your arm is bent, lift the torso up. This is an uplifting posture. <laughs> Breathe, all right. Now we're gonna tilt the torso back upright, goal post arms and allow the torso to untwist, hands to the lap, back to our wide leg forward fold, nice and slow. Pausing with the forearms on the legs, elbows on the legs to re-lengthen the spine. That was side angle, triangle, warrior postures. 
which by the way my opinion can be more challenging on the chair than standing hands to the lap pull the belly in and let's roll up round the back as you roll up stacking the vertebrae one at a time okay so we did triangle, side angle, triangle. Let's do one more posture on this side. Walk the, um, if you're facing forward on the front edge of your chair, walk the left foot back. Right foot stays forward in seated mountain. So the left knee drops. If you're facing, if you're sitting facing the right, so there's no, no arms on the chair. <clears throat> Plant that right leg down. It's in square position and walk the left foot under the hip. This is Crescent Warrior. Everybody has their left hand on their hip and everybody has the right hand on the chair seat next to the right hip. Breathe. Point the left knee, thigh, down, away from the hip. We're dropping the hip. We're dropping the left hip a bit. And we're also pressing the left hip forward a bit. The hand can help. The movement's not big, it's subtle, but you may feel it makes a difference. Breathe. If you feel safe and secure on your chair, reach the left arm up. So the hand is reaching in the opposite direction that the knee is reaching. Breathe, crescent warrior. Hand returns to the waist and then it helps the leg return to seated mountain. Let's all face forward in our chairs, seated mountain. Okay, now we go to the other side. So we pick up the left leg and open it to the left. We can remain facing forward in our chair if there's arms on our chair seat, or we can actually scooch our hips more on an angle. So we're using the corner of the chair. Either way, our legs are in V shape. Our ankles start under our knees. Our body starts neutral. So the center line of our body is bisecting the angle between our legs. The belly is toned. The torso is lifted tall. Forward fold. Hinge forward nice and slow. Keeping the hands on the lap to support or maybe the forearms, elbows can reach the lap. The head is neutral. Back of neck, sides of neck, front of neck, as long as possible. Breathe. Maybe more bowing is available at this point. Maybe. Maybe the hands can slide down the legs. Maybe the head can drop. Maybe we can hold the elbows. Wherever your hands are, replace them onto the thighs. Pull the belly in and round the back. Pull the belly in and round the back. Slowly uncurl the spine as you stack the vertebrae, returning to wide-legged seated mountain. Arms to goal post position. We're using goal post in honor of the Michigan-Michigan State game tomorrow. Press the thumb and first finger together. Sit up nice and tall. Rotate the body to the right. More right. 
Press the feet down, lift high through crown. Good. This is, we're entering warrior two, but we're not gonna take the full expression of warrior two. We're gonna shift the ribs and the shoulders to the left, shifting the upper body to the left until we can set the left elbow down on the lap. The right arm can stay bent. You can touch the shoulder or reach up. Triangle. Well, actually, this is side angle first. Breathe. Remember, this is a reach up posture. So reach up strongly, no matter where your hand is. Reach up. Feel length in the waist, even that left waist. Breathe. Use your feet. Press down to the feet feet and squeeze the legs open. Maybe the left arm straightens inside the leg. Now we're using total abdominal to hold us up. Breathe. You got this. You got this. Triangle, trikonasana. Rebend the right elbow, rebend the left and tip yourself upright. And then untwist the torso, place the hands on the lap and take a moment to receive those two powerful postures. And then the next standing warrior is crescent. So if you are primarily facing the front of your chair because you have arms on your chair, knees start forward and we slide the right foot back under the chair as best we can. So the right knee drops. We hold on to the chair. The right hand can go to the hip. The other option is to turn left more left, the right thigh is freer to move. The left foot stays in mountain position, grounded and square, and we slide the right foot back, right knee back. A nice way to use a block in this posture is right under that shin, the right shin. And there's different levels to the block. You don't have to have a block, but you can certainly use it. It helps with stability. Right hand is on everybody's hips, left hand holding the chair. And this is where we push and point our right knee downward. It's like we're lengthening the right thigh bone out of the hip. That hip is also pressing forward a bit. The hand can help it or our muscles or both. So down and forward. Breathe. And if you feel secure on your chair, reach the right arm up. Opposite direction that the right leg is reaching. Breathe. Beautiful crescent. Hand returns to the hip, and then the hand can help the legs return to seated mountain. <clears throat> All right, let's do figure, um, let's do tree pose, figure four. So if you have a block, have that handy, and we will start with our left leg is our standing leg. So left leg stays in Tadasana, mountain position. The right foot, the bottom of the right foot is inside the left ankle and the right knee falls open. It can be on a block. So it's inside touching the calf and the knee falls open. Or it can be on the thigh and the knee is dropping open to the right. Find the position for your leg 
your right leg. And then we'll find the position for our arms. Arms can be at hips. Our arms are symmetrical in tree pose. At hips, Anjali Mudra at the heart. Maybe touching the shoulders. Maybe goal post. Tone the belly. Close the ribs. Reach up through crown. Breathe. Push the left foot down. Make a footprint with your left foot. Breathe, maybe reach your branches up. Branches return to the waist and then they help the leg return to seated mountain, preparing for side two, which may look different from side one because our hips can be very different from side to side. And there's other factors too. We know this. So at the ankle, left bottom of left foot, and the knee drops open. Maybe on a prop. Maybe on the thigh. No pain. We don't want to put make our body feel pain unnecessarily. And we also want to keep our posture tall. So for me, I know when my foot is higher, sometimes it's hard for me to keep my spinal, my vertebrae column erect and lifted. I, I tend to slouch more when my leg is higher. So then I just put my leg lower because my vertebrae get high priority. <laughs> To protect my back. Find your lower body position and then we find the position for our branches at the hips, at Anjali Mudra, shoulders, or reaching up to the sky. Tone the belly, course at the ribs, root down, feel the roots. Coming out your right foot, strong right-legged trunk. Breathe. Branches come down and the leg returns to seated mountain. We're gonna go right into figure four, which looks very similar to tree, but now we're crossing over down low. We'll start with the left leg square to dasana position, cross the right ankle over and the knee falls open. We can have a block on the outside of the leg, crossing at the shin and the knee falls open. Or again, and this one is similar, right across the, the leg, the thigh, figure four. So find what works for your hip and knee on right side. Then find a tall posture. For figure four, this is also called gentleman's posture. We do a forward fold. We hinge at the hips. So you can have your hands at the hip crease and fold over the hip crease. Or Anjali Mudra and fold there. Breathing. We really need strong roots in our left leg here to hold us up, even though we're folding forward. Breathe. Some of you who have your ankle crossed over your thigh, you may wish to put your arms, um, connect them into the shin bone so that you can press your arms in the shin bone and lengthen the spine with that traction, that connection. It's lovely. Okay, push every, we're coming out, push into your left leg to unhinge. And then we'll switch sides. Switch the block to the outside of the right leg. Cross the ankle down low. 
that knee falls open. This may be a perfect position for the left leg. Or a little higher or the highest yet. I guess the highest yet would be if you could lift your leg and put it behind your head. <laughs> I have seen those in the really old yoga books, but I don't really think that's so great for the spine. <laughs> oh, I think I can leave my foot up high on this side. All right, find the position for your lower body and then hands, start at the hips, Anjali Mudra, maybe reaching up. Tone the belly. And we'll hinge forward. If your arms are reaching up, place them to Anjali Mudra. We don't want our arms up high to reach forward. Hinge forward, breathe. If you're hinged far enough and can wrap those upper arms in front of the shins, go for it. Otherwise, just keep lengthening through the crown, breathing. Push into your right foot, unhinge. Hands come down, help the leg to seated mountain. Okay, one last posture before Shavasana is bound angle. If you have a second chair, it's lovely to put your feet up on the second chair, a footstool. You can use your blocks as a footstool, soles of feet together, knees drop open. So now both knees are dropping open at the same time. We've done a lot on one side and then the other. If you don't have props or second chair, no problem. Soles of feet together, knees drop open, and the outer edges of the feet are on the floor. This is Baddha Konasana, bound angle. It's also called butterfly pose, cobbler's pose. Cobblers would sit this way while they're repairing shoes or making shoes. Allow your shoulders to roll back and your palms to face up. This posture has so many benefits. It's really good for our elimination health, the bladder and digestive system. This is a really nice posture to do while you're lying in bed. You can lie down and have your feet in this position. The benefits are the same. It's, um, it's good for the prostate. It's good for fertility and menstrual cramps, hot flashes. And we did that triple warmer smoothie earlier in class that cools down the inflammation, this posture does that as well. Let's stay here for a few more breaths. This is a, what's considered a restorative posture. There's several yoga postures that can be held for a long time with support. <clears throat> so we're not straining muscles or using our muscles, so to speak. We're, we're very supported, but our body's in the shape of the posture. And that has a restoring effect. Ref Refreshing the nervous system, restoring the nervous system, very healing. And this is one of those postures. Oh, darn it. I just realized we didn't do headstand or handstand. Oh, well, next time, folks. <laughs> and I'm just kidding. 
we really won't do them. There is a way to do them, but without turning upside down. Okay, close the knees, use your hands to help. And if you have that second chair, straighten your legs out onto that second chair. Make sure your calves are supported. The footstool is great. The blocks. If, you're, if you have nothing, no props, don't worry. Just let your feet and legs be a comfortable distance apart. Sit back in your chair. Palms can be up or down. Please roll the shoulders back to feel an opening in the chest and then allow the shoulders to settle back. Let's take the middle finger and just gently tap the forehead like little feather taps. And you can actually use all your fingers if you wish. Feather tap the forehead and the brow area. And then release the hands to the lap once again. So yay for you for showing up for yourself. Feel gratitude in your heart for showing up for yourself this hour. We've spent the majority of our life showing up for our friends, showing up for our family members, showing up for our bosses. And I think it's really nice to recognize when we show up for ourselves. Settling into Shavasana now, feeling heaviness in the bones, softness and lightness in the skin. Quieting down the body. Consciously bringing the body to stillness. This conscious rest so it can receive all that we did this prior hour, the breath, the postures, the energy work, the acupressure work. And we invite our mind to come to stillness as well. And if it helps the mind to be more still, distracting it from the monkey mind, the monkey chatter, we can offer a mantra for the mind to anchor to. We can use the breath for the mind to anchor, observing breath, or we can use words like let go, let go. Let go. So for the next minute or so, practice the, the anchor technique, using your breath as anchor, watching, feeling, noticing the breath, or using the mantra as an anchor. Whisper thinking the mantra, let go in your mind. Very nice. You're welcome to stay in this position as long as you like. 
when you are ready to come out, come out slowly to honor the nervous system. Bringing slow, small movements back into the body with the fingers and the toes, maybe the eyebrows. Hands to Anjali Mudra, lifting the heart to the thumbs. Let's place our thumbs in front of the forehead. Blessings for clear thinking. <clears throat> thumbs in front of the mouth. Blessings for kind words. Kind words coming and going. And then thumbs to the heart. Blessings for love. Love for each and every one of us. <clears throat> May we be well. May we be at peace. May we be joyful. Namaste. Namaste.